Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel Amazon African Motives. We are still working on the question paper of uh, February 2022 on engineering science and two on electricity. So we are given guys to on the question which is on question number nine so if you are new guys to my channel you can consider being part of the family by subscribing so that you won't miss any of the classes that we shall be having from as on african motives so the first question on question 9.1 is give four factors that affect the resistance of a conductor and its relationship with the resistance of a conductor what will be the relationship okay guys so in order for you to know these factors we actually know they are taken from the formula of resistance where we know that resistance is equivalent to rho l over a where this is actually rho, 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 like this which is resistivity resistivity all right so resistivity is rho rho l over l over area so that's where we are going to have the effectors as you can see these are direct proportional to the resistance and this area is inverse to the what to the um or is indirectly proportional to that to the resistance all right so that's the factors guys that you're having uh, factors affecting the resistance of a conductor they are actually taken from the formula uh, that's the formula that i've written there r for resistance is equal to rho l over air area where we've got the resistivity the length the resistivity the length and the and the area so the first thing that you know that is the length as you can see length is proportional so length there is directly proportional to the resistance that is the resistance of what of the conductor all right then the resistivity the resistivity which is this raw is is also direct as you can see is directly proportional to the resistance of the conductor also then the area uh is inverse this one is inverse okay so let's see another part also on area so the cross-sectional area which is a is inversely proportional to the resistance of the conductor also then another very 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 important factor these are actually the ambient uh ambient yeah physical factors these are called the ambient physical factors uh, such as temperature so temperature it's an ambient physical factor something that is just there to know that when there is an increase in temperature there's going to be an increase in resistance a decrease in temperature a decrease in resistance uh, there are actually resistances resistors that actually don't follow this part uh, for a normal consideration temperature is directly proportional to the to the resistance okay so that so that's another factor temperature which you cannot see on this formula that is why we are referring to them as ambient physical factors so that is not indicated on the formula but is there so this resistivity we know that is the type of the material actually that you are talking with so it's going to be uh, like that so the temperature is directly proportional to the resistance also of the conductor all right so that was it guys on this part then let's see on that question on 9.21 indicate whether the following statements are true or false by writing only true or false next to the question number okay so we, we just answer guys answer the question by writing only true or false only that is what is needed we do not need any calculations or so forth but you can do them separately but on your answer it's supposed to be like this 9.21 we just need true 9.22 we just need true or false again all right so Two resistors of 8 ohms and 6 ohms are connected in parallel and the total current of the circuit is 3 amps. The voltage supply is 8 volts. So does it make sense? Let's, let, let's see, does this part make sense? We are given, these are two resistors which are connected in parallel. So we know that in parallel we have got something like this. So you can just do this as sketch to see what is happening. So these are the resistors which are connected in parallel. The one with the 8 ohms and the other one with 4 ohms okay because we're given four and eight the total current passing through is three amps the voltage is eight okay so there's a current that is passing through here of three amps so there's a current flowing so what is going to be the voltage we know that the voltage in a parallel circuit is actually the current that is going to flow times the total resistance of the parallel circuit so let's prove if we are going to obtain this true we have the current but we don't have the total resistance of the parallel so you have to calculate the parallel component which we know that the resistance for the parallel if they are two you just use product over 
over sum just like that guys okay so let's apply product over sum now uh, let's see what you're going to have the product is 4 by that's 8 by 4 8 by 4 over 8 plus 4 all right so let's see what you're going to have here okay so just make sure you put on your calculator this fraction here so you put this fraction okay then you multiply 8 by 4 over 8 plus 4 over 8 plus 4 like that you're going to obtain 1 comma 3 3 or 2 comma 6 6 7 so like that or not to miss this write it as 8 over 3 all right so you're going to obtain 8 over 3 uh, ohms so that you don't lose anything so this is your resistance 8 over 3 so now let's find the v parallel so v parallel is the total current which is the current of 3 times the total resistance of the parallel component which is 8 over 3 so you're going to multiply by 8 over 3 okay so it's 3 times 8 over 3 or just this 8 over 3 times 3 so you're going to obtain 8 so you're going to have 8 volts so that means this is true because that is what we are given that the voltage of the supply is 8 volts so that's true okay so that's true that's true that's true so where did we write this again i don't know but i wrote it what i wrote it let me just write it again 9.21 so this is actually true all right then what about 9.22 all right let's see oh so this one is uh, totally out on 9.22 we are given in a single dc circuit it is found that two resistors with the each having the resistance of 10 ohms are connected in parallel to each other and the parallel combination is connected in series with another resistor of 5 ohms the total value of effective resistance of the circuit is 10 ohms okay let's see let's see it's a dc circuit uh, we have two resistors having resistance of 10 ohms are connected in parallel to each other okay so we have resistors connected in parallel i'm afraid to lose this again okay let me just write let me just pull aside maybe i might forget it like what i did last time so these are two resistors in parallel like this all right then these two resistors then then uh, further on there is another one which is actually connected in series something like that all right so we know that these ones in parallel and the one in series the total or the effective resistance is going to be r parallel plus the series resistor all right so that's it r parallel remember product over sum whenever you're given parallel is product over sum so we want to calculate because we are given the total so we want to see if we are going to obtain an effective which is the total of 10 that is what we want to prove so product over sum product they are two equal so it's 10 and 10 these are equal 10 ohms they are each equal to 10 and the other one this one it's a 5 ohms the series one is 5 ohms something like that okay so this one is going to be 10 by 10 over 10 plus 10 so it's 10 by 10 over 10 plus 10 that is product over sum plus the series resistor this is the series resistor which have got 5 ohms all right so from this part your product over sum you're going to obtain 5 plus 5 which is actually going to give you 10 ohms so this is the total on the effective resistance of this circuit which is 10 ohms so taking this we are going to see definitely this is 10 ohms so that is true so this statement is true so you can't write you can't write true or false without calculations that is why it's two marks there so it's not a matter of just a guess to say ah, no let me take the first one is true the second one is false no nothing like that you have to prove whatever you are, you are doing there okay so that's it guys on this one we have got a true true there give one example where mutual inductance is used in uh, practice mutual inductance okay so mutual inductance actually we are referring to those uh, transformers okay we have, we have got transformers here transformers what else mutual inductance uh, inductive induction mode yeah we can make also induction motors here yeah? that's another part also induction motors we've got induction motors okay so these are the parts that you actually have there where you are working with a transformer uh, when you are working with a mutual inductance you can actually work with this in transformers or you can work with this in induction uh, motors so that's that's it uh, on this question on electricity so as you can see typical questions on electricity they can be like this also or you can be given a condition where you have to 
draw a circuit, then you answer some typical questions under that. But that's what we had on this part. So that's it guys from Amazon African Motives. Still working on question papers and revisions for engineering science and to not to miss these classes, make sure that you become part of the family Amazon African Motives by subscribing and don't forget to share our videos to your friends and colleagues so that they also can benefit from this information that you're having. So that's it guys from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.